Made of stone. Thank you. Uh, on, on March the 6th, I wrote to you asking about the FBI's relationship with the author of the tr Trump Russia dossier, Christopher Steele. Most of these questions have not been answered, so I'm going to ask them now. Prior to the Bureau launching the investigation of the alleged ties between the Trump campaign and Russia, did anyone from the FBI have interactions with Mr. Steele regarding the issue? It's not a question that I can answer in this forum. As you know, I've, I've briefed you privately on this, and if there's more that's necessary, then I'd be happy to do it privately. Have, have you ever represented to a judge that the FBI had interaction with Mr. Steele, whether by name or not, regarding alleged ties between the Trump campaign and Russia prior to the Bureau launching its investigation of the matter? I have to give you the same answer, Mr. Chairman. This one I'm going to expect an answer on. Do FBI policies, just the policies, allow it to pay an outside investigator for work another source is also pay paying him for as well? Want me to repeat it? Do FBI policies allow it to pay an outside investigator for work that another source is also paying that uh, investigator for? I don't know for sure as I sit here. I, possibly is my answer, but I'll get you a precise answer. In writing? Sure. Okay. Uh, did the FBI provide any payments whatsoever to Mr. Steele related to the investigation of Trump associates? I'm back to my first, I can't answer in this forum. Was the FBI aware, was the FBI aware that Mr. Steele reportedly paid his sources, who in turn paid their subsources to make the claim in the dossier? Same answer, sir. Here's one you ought to be able to answer. Is it vital to know, is it vital to know whether or not sources have been paid in order to evaluate their credibility, and if they have been paid, doesn't that information need to be disclosed if you're relying on that information in seeking approval for investigative authority? I think in general, yes. I think it is vital to know. The FBI and the Justice Department have provi provided me material inconsistent answers in closed settings about its reported relationship with Mr. Steele. Will you commit to fully answering the questions from my March 6th and April 28th letter and providing all requested documents so that we can resolve those inconsistencies even if in a closed session being necessary? Because as I sit here, I don't know all the questions are in the letters. I, I don't want to answer that specifically, but I commit to you to giving you all the information you need to address just that challenge, because I don't believe there's any inconsistency. I think there's a misunderstanding, but in a classified setting, I'll, I'll give you what you need. Okay. Well, I hope to show you those inconsistencies. No, and I think I know what you're, you're, uh, where the confusion is, but I think in a classified setting, we can straighten it out. Question, uh, next question, according to a complaint filed with the Justice Department, the company that oversaw dossier's creation was also working with a former Russian intelligence operate, operative on a pro-Russian lobbying project at the same time. The company Fusion GPS allegedly failed to register as a foreign agent for its work to undermine the Magnitsky Act which is a law that lets the president punish Russian officials who violate human rights. Before I sent you a letter about this, were you aware of the complaint against Fusion was acting as an unregistered agent for Russian interests? It's not a question I can answer in this forum. You can't answer that? No, no, I can't. Uh, on to something else. Last week, the FBI filed a declaration in court pursuant to Freedom of Information Act litigations. The FBI said that a grand jury issued subpoenas for Secretary Clinton's emails. 
Yet, you refuse to tell this committee whether the FBI saw it or had been denied access to grand jury process from the Justice Department. So, I think a very simple question, why does the FBI give more information to someone who files a lawsuit than to an oversight committee in the Congress? And that has happened to me several times. I'm not sure, Senator, whether that's what happened here. Uh, but you're right, I refuse to confirm in our hearings as to whether we'd used a grand jury and how. I think that's the right position because I don't know it well enough. I don't think I can tell you, I don't think I can distinguish the statements made in the FOIA case as I sit here. But, yeah. Well, just as a matter of proposition then, if, if I, Chuck Grassley, as a private citizen, file a Freedom of Information Act, and you give me more information than you'll give to Senator Chuck Grassley, how do you justify that? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I don't, what do I you can't... mean it's a good question? How do you justify it? What, oh, I was going to say, it's a good question. I can't as I sit here. Ye gods. Was the Clinton investigation named Operation Mid-Year because it needed to be finished before the Democratic National Convention? If so, why the artificial deadline? If not, why was that the name? No, certainly not because it had to be finished by a particular date. Um, there's an art and a science to how we come up with code names for cases. They, they assure me it's done randomly. Sometimes I see ones that make me smile, so I'm not sure. But I can assure you that, that it was called Mid-Year Exam was the name of the case. I can assure you the name was not selected for any nefarious purpose or because of any timing on the investigation. Last question. When was the grand jury convened? Was it before you f your first public statement about closing the case? I'm still not in a position where I'm comfortable confirming uh, whether and how we used a grand jury in an, in an open setting. I don't know enough about what was said in the FOIA case to know whether that makes my answer silly, but I just want to be so careful about talking about grand jury matters. So I'm, I'm not going to answer that.